Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video I want to talk about an important topic in modern C++ and that is lambda expressions, also known as lambdas. I am pretty sure that you have heard about lambdas before and in this video I'm going to explain everything that you need to know in order to start writing faster and cleaner code with lambdas in modern C++. Now, in this video, I'm going to explain the most important concepts that you need to know. But since this is a very broad topic and there is a lot to learn, if you want to see some additional examples and practice on your own, I am going to link a book in the description that you can use to learn about lambdas in modern C++. And the best thing is that it is completely free. So make sure to check it out. Lambda expressions were introduced in modern C++ and they are available with C++ version 11 and above. And the main purpose of Lambda expressions is to allow you to write inline anonymous functions. So what are inline anonymous functions? Well, if you're familiar with regular functions, you know that the main purpose of a function is to allow you to write the code once, put it in a function, and then whenever you need that code, you would just invoke that function. So no need to retype the code again. Now, an inline function, on the other hand, is a function that has very small definition. Inline functions are usually very simple and they are very often used for small snippets of code that are very simple and they are not going to be reused like regular functions. So they are not even worth to be named. So that is why I also said that they are anonymous. So as I said, a lambda is an unnamed function that is not going to be reused like regular functions are. Uh, lambdas are often used for short, small snippets of code that are so simple that they are not even worth to be named. They keep your code clean, they are easy to read, and they are fast to execute, and they keep everything in the same place, as you will see when I show you the code. And also, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you a couple of tips and tricks that you can do with Lambda, so make sure to watch the video until the end. So I believe that's enough speaking about lambdas. Now I'm going to show you the code. And for writing the code, we are going to use C++ Builder, which is the best ID that you can use in order to build C++ user interface applications. Um, so if you are also interested to learn about C++ user interface applications, I'm going to link that in the description. And I will leave a link that you can use in order to download C++ Builder in the description as well. So let's create a console application that we will need in order to write our code. Click on File, New, Other, and then Console Application. OK, make sure that C++ is selected here. Click OK, and here is our code. So if I run this program, let's see what is going to happen. OK, let's add a couple things. So here I'm going to say System, Pause, Greater Than Null. OK, and then let's add std c out hello world like this okay and then one more thing that i need to do is i need to include io stream so i will say include io stream like this and now our code should work so if i run my application again here we have our hello world console application so how does a lambda look like? Well, let's delete this code and I'm going to start with a simple example. So what do you need in order to create a lambda? First thing that you need are these angled brackets and then parentheses and then you need curly brackets like this. So this here is how you create a lambda. Now, I know that there is a lot of brackets, so let me explain what each of these is used for. So this first pair, these angled brackets, are called capture clause, and I'm going to explain what they are used for later in this video. For now, let's just put CC here, so capture clause. Now, these parentheses are used in order to pass parameters. So here you put parameters, P. Okay, and then inside these curly brackets, you put the definition of your lambda function. So let's call it FD, function definition. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to create an example, and then we are going to see how we can solve a problem from that example by using lambdas. So the first thing that I need is a vector. So let's 
say here, include vector, like this. And then here, let's create a vector. Let's say std vector. And let's say that it's going to be vector of integers. And I will call it v. And I will initialize it so that it has elements of 2, 3, 7, 14, and 23, for example. Now, an interesting thing that I want to do with this vector here is the following. In C++, there is a very useful header file called algorithm, and it contains a lot of functions that are designed to work with ranges of elements like our vector here, and one of those functions is for each. So let me show you how that works and how we are going to use lambdas with for each function. So as I said, it is part of algorithm header file. So the first thing that we need to do is say include algorithm. Okay. And one of the functions from this header file is called for each. So I will say std for each, like this. And what this for each function should do is it should iterate through this vector here from the beginning until the end. So let's specify that. Let's say for each v dot begin until v dot end. Okay. What I want to do is I want to do something like this. So for each element of this vector here, from the beginning until the end, please do something. And let's put semicolon at the end. So now I want to specify what this something is. So let me very quickly type some code that I want to show you. And I want to show you a problem with that code. And then we are going to introduce lambdas in order to solve that problem. So this is the code that I added. I created a structure and inside it, I had to override this operator here that receives one parameter and I just print that parameter in the body of this function. And I named that something. So the same name as this here. So what we expect to happen now is that for each element of this vector here, from the beginning until the end, we invoke this function here. So the result should be that all of these elements should be printed in our console. So let's run the program. Okay, and we have an error and the error is this part here. So let's just comment this. This is not valid code. This is just for us to remember how a lambda looks like. So let's run the program now. Okay, and as I promised, here are all of the elements of our vector. Now, the problem that I have with this code here, this code, is that it's overkill. So to create a structure and then override an operator just to be able to print an element into the console is an overkill, too much code. So what I want to do now is I want to show you how you can solve this same problem by using a lambda expression. So we will write much less code is going to be much cleaner and easier to read and understand. So let's create our lambda and here is the formula that we will use. Let's do it here. So the first thing is our capture clause and then parentheses for parameters, and then curly brackets for function definition. So here we have a lot of brackets. So what do we put inside these brackets? Well, for now, this capture clause is going to stay empty. And then inside these parentheses, we put parameters. And that is going to be this parameter here. So int x, that goes here. And then inside curly brackets, we put function definition, and that will be this part here. So I'll copy it and paste it here. Okay, now, what I can do is I can just replace this something with this line of code with our lambda. So I'm going to copy it and then paste it here. Okay, and I will comment this part. And I will also comment this part so that we can see how our program will run with this lambda function instead of this part here. So if I run the program, as you can see, the behavior is the same with this one line of code as it was with this structure and then overloaded operator and so on. So our program works as expected. 
So what that means is that now I can completely remove this code because from now we will not use this approach, but we will use lambdas instead. So again, why would you use this approach here instead of the one that I just deleted? Well, it's cleaner code, it's easier to read, and it keeps everything in the same place. So everything that you need is here in this line of code. And in case that you wanted to write and use this function again, you would probably retype it anyways, because it's very simple, it's a very trivial function. And if you wanted to reuse this as a function, create a function to be able to reuse it, it's much more work than benefit. So you would have to create a function and then you would have to put it in a header file and you would have to find a place where you are going to put that header file so that it can be accessed by different parts of your application so that your function can be reused. And then if that header file is going to consist of functions that are like this one, what are you going to name it? Like my favorite two line functions. It doesn't really make sense. So that is why in this situation, lambdas are much better solution. So what happens if you wanted to do something else? Well, let's delete this part because I prefer to write my lambda here and then just copy it and paste it here. So let's say, for example, that for each element of this vector, you want to print the information if it is even or odd number. Let's do that part here. So here, instead of just printing the element, I will create an if else expression. So I will say if x modulated by 2 is equal to 0, that means that the number is even. So if it is divisible by 2, that means that the number is even. So I will say std c out x is oh is even number like this. Okay, and then I will say else x is odd number like this. So if I want to use this lambda inside my for each, I will just paste it here like this. So capture clause parameters, and then the definition of my function, which is this part here. Okay, so now you need to comment this part out because we will have a compile time error if we don't. And then if I run my program, let's see what is going to happen. And we have the information that two is even, three is odd, seven is odd, 14 is even, and then 23 is odd number. So that is another example of how you can use Lambda expressions. Something that I promised at the beginning of the video is that I will share some useful tips related to lambda expressions, and that is the fact that lambda expressions can be much more powerful than ordinary functions. And that is because a lambda expression can have access to variables from its enclosing scope. So what does that mean? Well, that means that this lambda here can have access to all the variables from its enclosing scope, which is this scope here. So all the variables from our main function. And at the moment, we don't have any variables, so let's change that. Let's create a variable. I'll do it here, delete this part of the code. So let's create a variable of type int, and I will call it d, and let's assign it the value of 3. So what I want to do with this variable here is I want to pass it into this lambda, and for that I will use this capture clause. So I want to capture this variable here into this lambda function, and how I will do that? Well, you just say here d. Very simple. So now you can use this d variable inside this lambda here. So how are we going to use this d? So the, the reason why I named this variable d is because I want to use it in order to divide my x by that variable. So I will say if x modulated by number d gives the result of 0, that means that x is divisible by number d. So let's change this part here as well. So if this is true, that means that x is divisible by, and then here let's put this number d like this. And then in this else situation, I will say that x is not 
divisible by d. And let's delete this line of code. Okay, so if I run the program again, let's see what is going to happen. As you can see, it says that 2 is not divisible by 3, 3 is divisible by 3, 7 is not, 14 is not, and 23 is not. Okay, and what you can do now is you can change this D to be any number that you want. So let's say, for example, number 7, and if I run the program again, it says that 2 is not, 3 is not, 7 is divisible by 7, 14 is as well divisible by 7, and then 23 is not. So that is how you capture a variable and pass it to your lambda by using this capture clause. Now, one thing that you cannot do in this situation is you cannot change the value of this d variable. So if I try to do something like this, if I try to say, for example, d is equal to 10, we are going to get an error. Okay, the application has failed and it says cannot assign to a variable captured by copy in a non-mutable lambda. So what does that mean? It means that if you want to change values of captured variables, you need to pass them by a reference. And this here should work. Okay, so if you pass it by value like this, that means that you cannot change it inside your lambda. And then if you want to change it, you will need to pass it by a reference like this. Okay, so if I write the value of my D now, so if I say STD C out and then I say D is equal to, and then let's print D. And if I run the program, as you can see, the value of our D variable has been changed. Okay, so what happens if you have multiple variables that you want to capture in your Lambda? Well, let's say that you have also a variable called E, and then its value is equal to five. So if you want to pass this E variable as well, well, you just put a colon sign and you pass that variable as well like this. And then again, here you will not be able to change the value of this E. So if I say E is equal to 10 or 19, this here is going to result as an error. If you want to change it, again, you need to pass it by a reference like this. Now, something that is useful to know is that if you want all your variables to be passed by a reference so that you can change them all in your lambdas, what you can do instead is you can just put this ampersand symbol like this and this should work. So if I run the program, there will be no compile time errors, as you can see. And then if you want all your variables to be passed by value, you use this symbol here. And that means that the values of these variables will not change inside this lambda. You will not be able to do that. So if I run the program, we get two errors for these two lines of code. Okay, so let's return this so that we can change the value of both variables like this. So those were some tips and tricks that I wanted to share related to Lambda expressions. And if you want to see some more examples, definitely check out the book that I will link in the description. It is completely free, so you can download it and use it to learn on your own and learn more details and see more examples of Lambda expressions and how they are used. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and then also share it with your friends and with other people who would like to learn programming. And I will see you in some other video. Bye!